Hi, good evening. This is Sarah Chiu, program is Basket Starfish, um, our language core. Um, tonight, I am going to uh, change a little bit of my topic. Last week, I was saying that I am going to talk a little bit about the repetition, how we use uh, the repeating of sounds or writing to express, you know, abundance and also exaggeration. But because of what is going on in this world, I want to change a little bit. And actually today, um, I my topic is about, you know, killing for truth, you know. As you see a lot of shooting going on, I'm going to use my language research uh, to explain a little bit, you know, what this ancient idea already existed in ancient time. And so uh, it almost sounded like a homily um, to certain people, but excuse me, I'm representing an Eastern point of view, and it might offend a few people, but uh, just... Uh, want to uh, tell you that you know it's all out of goodwill because I do not understand all this shooting and killing in the name of God in the name of truth okay so let me start my uh, slideshow from this week Okay, um, again, I want to show you this first slide to show you what uh, basket starfish is, uh, looks like. And as I said, it's come from the same core and we are not separated family trees. You know, we all share one core. And uh, because as long as we believed in uh, everyone being as different uh, family tree in different um, hierarchy and it is not very healthy for our growth as a human uh, species and so I think this uh, view of the human language should be changed and uh, uh, I was actually really inspired by what I heard in the news you know the killer you know a very young kid you know of 19 years old said he's been inspired by other killing so I want to explain a little bit about the word inspire and how it become aspiration actually this I and A is actually the representation in the language field as uh, all the vowels either it's A, E, I, O, U they are all under the same symbol as a bull head you know as you will see going on okay so um, from the very beginning when the writing first started uh, the Sumerian started to represent you know a little piece of reed a grass or the essence by this form and you will see this little bull head is right there representing the growth of the the essence of growth and then life is like this you know with more uh, like grass piling up but then still the uh, bull head is right there and this is the sound it's supposed to carry and this is a piglet you know a piglet you know which in the ancient time carries some kind of magical power because it's of its fertility its reproductive you know ability and you will see still see that this uh, little uh, bull is still right there and then it sim it share also similar sound with say if you go back to my uh, program not last week if you go to the YouTube type in my program name you will see that you know the Chinese word sung and uh, actually share very very similar sound sound with that and and here again uh, this is a baby pig also in uh, Chinese writing you will see that you know the ancient also put this little unseen energy symbol right there the essence of this little piglet and then the sound is very similar to life right there uh, we say as T or D okay in Cantonese sound and um, and here you will see that I take this out you know by itself you know it will has the sound of D uh, it actually is a representation of all agents of motion and uh, of course at times it can represent the food and then uh, as time went by now in the modern Chinese we use this word to actually mean staying still you know there's something actually staying inside something and then I will have to bring you back to if you can see it clearly it is actually an upside down a form and then uh, this is the proto sinaitic form of aleph uh, aleph as you can see it became the a which was a, really a bull head and this is the aleph you know upside down like that and um and 
if you know Greek, you will know that a lot of the energy words actually started with a vowel. And the most important word of it is animal. Animal is actually in Greek, it means wind or air or breeze. This is exactly when the uh, Bible comes in, you know, when they begin to say that God uh, blow the air into Adam's nose and he he's endowed with life and become a living being. So this uh, eight symbol is very consistent in the ancient world, even though it's read by different sound, okay? And then even in mathematical term, if you look at it as a mathematic symbol, and it is a universal, what you call a universal quantifier, it means that this is the truth, you know, holds true for all the, com uh, all the components, you know, it is an important component of anything that exists, you know, so it's again, it is like uh, the essence of anything, okay? So it has been consistent since ancient time. Uh, the animal uh, moved uh, down to the Latin, and in Latin, anima means uh, wind, air, or breeze, or, or it means a breath, or means life, or it means our soul, okay, which is like a breeze, you know, something airy, okay? And of course, you know, it is closely related to the cattle or the ram, um, because when I see horn, you know, it actually... Uh, uh, involved a lot more animal even including the deer and all kinds of horn animal okay but let's look at just the cattle and the ramp um, which is a very a period that you know the Greek was very very active so the symbolism you know you need to pay attention to the symbolism and this is a very important ancient uh, Greek god you know it is a god of destruction Ares right now a lot of the people who who play computers, shooting, killing games, you know, this is one of the gods they really, you know, kind of admire. Um, there's a, always a haunted god that go around and, and, and can exercise their killing spree, okay? And there's no wonder at the same time that you will see Alexander the Great is, you know, worshipping this, you know, power, you know, because he's, he's actually a war engine. And then you will see that he's wearing that ram horn. And also uh, at that at that stage, you know, that's why the Aries, you know, the ram itself, you will see that it is actually the head of the ram uh, in a very uh, uh, abstract form. And the Aries, why it leads also the, the horoscope. At this time, uh, the Aries leads the horoscope. The A starts to lead the, uh, the Greek uh, writing system. So everything went side by side. It's a 360 degrees development of the whole world's, the whole world's culture. It is never as linear as what the link was uh, told you everything comes in as we human beings you know wrap around all cultures together okay so um, that's why also A, you know, uh, plays a very important part in the word act or action. And of course, you know, um, uh, when this killer was inspired by other killing acts, it's actually the anger that activate him. It is an act of anger that uh, inspire him, to, you know, to become his aspiration. So you will see that these words actually go hand in hand. Um, the thing is that um, in ancient time, you know, most of the... Uh, uh, religion was actually uh, uh, evolved because of this idea of yoga. Nowadays, you practice yoga. Everyone is saying, I practice yoga because I want to be happy. In ancient time, no one, uh, happiness was never the aim. Yoga is actually to, to yoke the animal inside us, that desire, that urge. If you look at the word urge, it's also started with a vowel, U-R-G-E, okay? So all this vowel sound, is actually all involved inside this uh, little symbol itself. It represents our desire, uh, everything that acts uh, inside us that motivates us to do anything. So the yoga is actually a way to yoke the, uh, this desire inside us. Either it is passion or it is anger. Oh, so um, this is uh, the, the problem with the modern world. We are no longer yoking ourselves in this sense. 
And sorry to say that, I said modern Western mode of education failed. Um, I think, you know, I can uh, say a little bit about that in this way. Uh, because we are taught to overstress the importance of this me. And of course, you know, recently there is this very hit song, Me, all right? Okay, and we forgot we are all the same as a human species and we should be all equal. And and the more Western uh, education system always Always train us to look for differences and to exaggerate them and all your doctor's thesis or whatever is to make in a small point of difference and exaggerate it endlessly and since we were children uh, when I first went to school you know the first thing we did was to give us two pictures of, of basically 99.5 percent similarity maybe there's a difference in one line or one little grain more then they will ask us to spot the differences then we'll be rewarded as a child to uh, to find these different differences so it goes on and on so we are very trained in that way and at the end we are blind in seeing similarities no matter how similar we are we keep spotting all those differences and in a way I I so I can say that we are molded by one education system led by the West, you know. So, but then time has changed. I think it is time we really have to step back to see what's wrong with our education system. And on um, the next slide, I will talk a little bit about this signs of equality. The first one is a uh, equal, uh, numeric equal sign. The other one is like a logical equal sign, you know. So I will explain a little bit. You will also see it um, in a lot of ancient writing or ready. So what is this equal sign with the other, uh, you know, similar equal sign? And one is two, the other is three, okay? And if you look at this, this is actually uh, ancient Egyptian hieroglyph. This is uh, to uh, represent, you know, uh, the whatever it described. If you put this uh, symbol next to it, it means abundance of it. It means a plural. And this is the Chinese writing psalm. Either it's put this way or the other way. Psalm is also always, either it means three, it also means a plural it also means you know abundance of something uh, we basically have this theory and uh, I mean this rule right there and we keep uh, using it to keep piling three things up to show the abundance of certain object okay so uh, this is back to Sumerian you know they have this too and this is a joining sign to 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 show you that they join the two things together and at times it uh, also has a sound of C at, at times it has sound of the B or the P so I won't write it right there and then this is a Phoenician uh, symbol Samak and um, in some of the books it tell you ex explanation of the sky some tell you explanation of the fish but for me this is really the symbol of gathering uh, abundance things together the abundance is represented by the number three okay this is Hebrew right there is a sin or shin uh, alphabet and it's also used by the number three and it's also used you know to to show a lot of uh, abundance and uh, you will see that uh, all these you know basically uh, share all these similar meanings and then, uh, if you don't think that we all share one symbol core, uh, one single core, I will show you. Um, actually, it's not just Indonesian. Uh, uh, in the, all the Southeast Asia, Asia, there is a very common, uh, like a chili sauce. It's called sambal sauce. Sambal sauce is a mix of all the ingredients to make it into a very tasty chili sauce. It's all known in Southeast Asia. Sambal it actually means you know gather of ingredients and then this is Chinese you know it has the sound of sam okay sam or tam and you will see that it we use the um, like a metaphor of the, the rope the string three uh, twining into one right there and the writing is like this the meaning will be joined or mixed very similar to this you know the Southeast uh, Asia and and also, if I look far, far away, what in what the ling linguists will call, you know, uh, proto, I mean, uh, North Germanic or Scandinavian, whatever they call them, this is Norwegian samle. Samle means assemble, and even in English, that sound is very, very consistent. And then in Bosnia, sam is oneself. You have to understand that the ancient already know that the self itself is made up a couple of very complicated subtle. Uh, 
different parts of, of the, the conscious, even the heart, like the heart, the mind, and, and things like that. So some in, in Bosnian is also a mixture of uh, uh, a few things into one, okay? And then uh, the I will show you uh, again, you know, this also in back to ancient Egyptian hieroglyph. This is, you see the three number right there, as an abundance of uh, read right there. It's also carried the sound of psalm, and this back to uh, Cantonese sound also, and this is a uh, sin or sim, okay? Um, this is, we use also the rope again, or the thread, you know, two twining into one. Uh, we have this uh, uh, sin, sim sound, and then um, this salmon, salmon in ancient Sumerian is a rope, a thicker rope, okay? So it is actually like this right here, you know, trailing a couple of your different strands together to make one thick rope. And then um, I show you a couple of times already that even in the uh, weaving world until this very day, they will have a one thread called S trail, the other one is called Z trail. They uh, trail them together to make this one stronger thread right there. So this S and the Z is always constantly, you know, linked to this, uh, uh, the earliest technology of human beings. In. Let's look at this uh, Phoenician sign uh, right there, Samak, okay? And this is actually a Chinese writing, you know, at a certain time. And we, uh, through the thousands of years of development, you know, the Chinese writing also changed uh, many times. And this is one of the period that, you know, we have uh, words up, okay? So as the S and the Z keep uh, interchanging what is dub uh, from the very beginning we either draw one bird you know that means a whole herd a whole flock of bird gathering or we actually draw three birds together representing this dub sound so of course it will become the English with gem as well okay the jamming things together so you will see that all this were uh, the ancient understanding one is all all is one you know that kind of uh, uh, understanding that they already have. So um, to uh, in relation to the Sumerian, the Chinese also have words like this. As I said, you know, this is to link two people together and, and this is actually linked two hands together. This is the, the word meaning friends and this is the word meaning side by side or, or meaning together. So you will see that this equal sign is or equivalent sign is very, very active already in ancient time. And of course, you know, in modern uh, currency, you are always also using the same symbol to mean the equivalence, you know. Of course, you know, they are not totally uh, the same, the same, but there's a, actually a subtle uh, mental equivalence, you know. So the three symbol and the two symbol is actually to give us all this meaning about how we sing things together, uh, either singular or similar or the sum total of a different variety or the summary of different things or the, when you say summon and, and assemble people together, they all become one people. Even one, each individual is a little bit different, we view them as the same. So this is exactly how the ancients uh, learn about the same. So they have, they seem to have a better scope than us, you know, about the same either than us. Nowadays, we actually uh, focus more on differences. And when we focus so much on differences, atrocity happens, you know, here I want to show you a few uh, Chinese proverbs, you know, this one I have shown you a few uh, episodes before and it, me it, it means, you know, to study uh, 10,000 scrolls is never equal to walking 10,000 miles. So nowadays we pay so much to attention to those papers you get from the university, which to me actually means nothing if you don't know the world, uh, it doesn't help if you learn all the books in the world. And uh, I put exaggeration in this walking because it doesn't mean that uh, th there are people who boast that they have been to many different places, but how they get to it is to fly to a place, take a taxi to the to a five star hotel, and then they read the same uh, guidebook, you know, tourist guidebook. They never even talk to a local people, and this is ha not how you travel. If you want to travel, you have to walk every single inch and really talk to the local people. Then 
that's how you learn about other people okay and the second profit I want to explain is this and having no books is better than believing the inerrancy of books you know this is the uh, things that we keep uh, teaching in my generation at least you know that we don't trust the books a hundred percent always you have to go and verify and the third will be a very very important thing for this day is what is happening in this world now uh, it means that you read passively uh, a book is a dead object you know uh, you give your own explanation you never uh, you you read and you don't uh, and, uh, and I mean you don't verify anything you read uncritically and reading can be very lethal you know you read lethally this is exactly how these people you know go around killing different people only because they read their own book so talking about books I want to show you different books that exactly it's the same all these books no matter you are in the Jewish tradition or you're in the Muslim tradition or you're in the Christian tradition you're Hindu tradition or you're in the Buddhist tradition all these things are written in different languages you know by different people but they are all talking about the same thing about kindness about acceptance of people but unfortunately these days you know these five books you know become um, you know, uh, the sacrifice of our own monism. I am not saying monotheism. There is nothing wrong with monotheism. Uh, what is wrong is our monism. Monism is about ourselves, you know, what we think that we always, what we believe is the only truth. Our God is the only God. Our God is the only true God. Your God is not the God. And I mean, if you really believe that, then you are really the victim of this monism some you know education so um, I want to explain a little bit about this you know uh, you will see that you know out of the, the early animalism you know from Hinduism and um, it started to have some thing like a caste system and out of that grew Buddhism Buddhism is the one that started to say no everybody's the same everybody can be the Buddha everybody can achieve that higher high attitude you know of of, of uh, uh, of, of uh, whatever you think is the nirvana okay so uh, from this well you can look at the way of the books were you will see that there are definitely different communication between these people and when I did this uh, research I actually find out that the world is so linear uh, I mean from the Western standard I even work in the PowerPoint and I cannot even find an arrow that is double arrow I cannot find an arrow from here so when when I use this you always think that I always think that this has a hierarchy over this no I tell you it's only because I cannot find a double arrow in the PowerPoint it's not on my intention it is the in it is the product of the people being so hierarchical every arrow has only one direction but I keep saying that no this world has both direction we are both recipient we are both giver as well okay so so um, a lot of the early uh, Jewish people, you know, because, you know, they were under pressure. So they end up, you know, uh, coming out with a new religion, what we call Christianity today. So this two uh, religions were actually totally linked to, together don't forget that Jesus was a Jew to begin with don't only remember Judah okay Jesus was a Jew okay so over here you will see that they are linked together because that kindness that is uh, shown by Jesus is actually echo in the Buddhism as well and then you will see that these are two brothers the, the Jewish and the and, and Muslim and then um, the Hinduism you would see that because you know people's uh, greed in power they go to different places so a lot of Hindu because the, uh, the vicinity they actually converted to different religion uh, they can become a Muslim they can become a Christian but they were the, the same people to begin with so and the Jewish might uh, because of vicinity also they might have converted to Hinduism and then this um, and then because of the, the, the wrong understanding you know the 
Christian later begin to persecute their own people. They forgot that at the very beginning, the believer of Christianity were actually Jews themselves too. So um, also again, the same happened with Muslim were attacking the Jews. The uh, the the Muslim were attacking the Christian. The Christian were attacking the Muslim. The Mu the Muslim were attacking the Hindu. The Hindu were attacking the 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 Muslim. The Muslim were attacking back. You know, so back and forth. Every Everybody was attacking each other like this. But I just want to tell you, all these books were the same. You know, if you see any difference, that means you didn't read the book properly. Okay, so. Okay, so I uh, brought out this, you know, tea does not need you to protect. You do not fight or kill for tea. What is tea? In this days now, even in logic, tea is still the symbol of truth. Okay, so, but this is not very new. I will show you some Chinese writing. And from the very beginning, this is it. You know, Chinese has the writing of manifest or the divine instruction. It already happened in Chinese, you know, more than 3,500 years ago. But even though I said, that Chinese wasn't the first, okay? So in Sumerian, they already have that. It changed to coniform, it become like this. And interestingly, it is called me. What uh, in English, you keep saying me, 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 okay? But what was me? Me at that time was a divine property that enabled cosmic activity. It was uh, that divine thing. It wasn't the me that we are talking about. It was something very subtle. And then uh, truth is subjective. I want to tell you that everyone look at this symbol, but at a different time, at a different angle. So truth is subjective and is multifaceted. The unseen power has many names like all these, you know. So from ancient time, even in the Phoenician time, there is a sign called Tao. Tao is also explained as the way. Uh, in Chinese, Taoism is actually the way. In, in Hebrew, in, in, in also Muslim, you know, they also call Tariq. Tariq is the way. In Greek, it's the Odos. Odos is also the way. It's always the a way of doing things. It's not about the God. It's about how you do things. So there are different ways of saying the same thing. Um, now I'm showing you the name of God. You know, this is ancient Sumerian. This is ancient Chinese. This Ding and this is Dai or Di. Okay, and and Turkish Tengri, Tengri, and this is Tin in Chinese. This is Etruscan. All these are creator God's name. They sounded exactly the same since ancient time. And this is Dios, and it changed from T to D. Dios. That's why you keep seeing this D sign to represent the God. And then fr from that, you change to the earth. And by this time, things become a little bit confused because you can explain uh, different... I have to stop the slide right there. But uh, I hope you go back to look at the slides and think about it. Thank you.